about this. One wrong move and we're dead in the water. But one right move and you could catch her and end this war. Alright guys, first things first, this is legit the most anticipated IP to be released this September since earlier this year. Well, for those of you who did miss out by Flying Wild Hog and Focus Home Interactive, we finally do have a release date of September 20th this year for Evil West. Well, in addition to a new trailer, the game itself is an action RPG hack and slasher. It is now on its way to all consoles and PCs except Switch. Take a look. Yeah, that was predictable. The tech of the PS5, it's like an open box of, of tools and goodies that we can play from and draw from. The 4K, HDR, improved haptics, 60 frames. Help us to reimagine The Last of Us. The Last of Us Part 1, on the other hand, well, the remade version, is now also scheduled to release September 2nd and on the PlayStation 5 only, although a PC port is in development and set to be released a little later. Well, Naughty Dog did just come out with a hefty amount of endgame footage in addition to a comparison video, said that the games, for those of you wondering, rebuild, complete with modern graphics, sound, and dual sense support as well. Check it out. Reactions, glances, glares, right? Like you get all of it almost closer to sort of the original performances. So no matter what you stick to me, like glue. Like glue. Like glue. Got it. Good. Good. We are able now to not only just have the highest fidelity characters in the cutscene, but also in gameplay. It's the same character, so now we can do these seamless transitions in and out. Every part of the game has benefited from seamless transitions and emotional scripting. Pretty good, huh? Our stories happen in gameplay, on a stick. She knew my mom. All this stuff is designed to keep you constantly in this world. Riley, come here. <laughs> now you got this, go. The sacred city of Ilden is the perfect staging grounds for an apocalyptic attack by the nefarious spawn of chaos, an army of demonic creatures that happens to be swarming into the city through a giant tear in the sky not unlike Dragon Age Inquisition's Fade Rift or Pokemon Legend Arceus's massive Space Time Rift. Moving on, we've got Souls Dice by Modest Games. Well, technically what you'd get if you combine Devil May Cry and some Dark Souls, some heavy Dark Souls stuff. So basically it's just a hack and slasher and in it you get to play the role of a warrior created by bonding two souls in terms of just premise. Guys, here's a trailer. We do know that the game is releasing September 20th, finally, and with the aim to deliver a dark, grim, aesthetic, packed with secrets and different gameplay mechanics as well. This is the premise of Solstice, a frenetic, combat-focused, third-person action-adventure game with lots of unique combos that would feel right at home in any Devil May Cry game. You'll spend quite a large chunk of time in Solstice playing as Briar, who is followed around by loot in her ghostly form as you hack and slash your way through hordes of foes as you move from mission to mission in a linear fashion. Though, at times you may also find yourself playing as loot during key story sequences. The interplay between Briar and loot is definitely worth calling out as a clear positive, notably the fact that loot has the ability to pacify Solstice's many, many enemies mid-attack, so you can leap in as Briar to deal serious damage. It's great then that Solstice... I'm out here looking for... something. Despite the world being in the state it is. Valkyrie, heed my words. Ragnarok tears our world asunder. A couple of weeks ago, and I've mentioned this one pretty recently, Square Enix also announced a brand new Valkyrie game going by Elysium, which is technically just a spin-off of Valkyrie Profile from all the way back 23 years ago, and to accompany this great news, the fine folks also released a new trailer. Said that the game is coming to the PlayStation consoles and PCs only, and on September 29th this year. Check it out, we also just got a new trailer too. have me battle. Even in death. Glory. I've no interest in that. There's nothing left for me in this world. I just want a chance to make things right. 
My name is Christopher. I have protected this land and its people as my forefathers did before me. Very well. Then I pledge my loyalty as your Inheriar until the very end. You are a being of divine power, are you not? Please, would you hear my plea? My name is Tyka. It was once my duty to watch over this land. Wretched soul, by Odin's command, you shall be purified. So this is one of the four gifts. If I had to guess, I'd say this was Gunganir. Engrave it upon your soul. Divine assault! Coming up behind that at number five, we have Isonzo or Asonzo, I'm not really sure. Well, the follow up to the World War first person shooting game Verdun. This game is finally releasing for PCs, the PlayStation 5, 4, Xbox consoles to September 13. And you know, this time it takes place on the Italian front, uh, pretty much staying true to the core and acting as a squad based shooter still, but then adding a lot of fresh game mechanics to make a little difference. And all of that long with a new all-Italian army. Check it out. And number six, I would say if you're a fan of old arcade-style racing games, Karak Street right now is probably the one you should keep an eye out for. It's a game that revolves around street racing at night mostly and sudden some sort of an open world and through multiple maps to go through. The game in my opinion looks pretty visually good, which is an important element in racing games nowadays since Forza. Karak Streets is releasing on PCs only and on September 8th this year. At number 7 we have Steel Rising, right now one of the most awaited Souls-like IPs to come out this year, which is technically putting players in this alternative history Paris about 200 years ago where some real true king has won the French are using an army of androids, which he didn't really but in, in, in the game he did. One of these androids then also happens to be the character you get to play as, and going against the whole thing cause why not? Shreel Rising is set to release September 8 and on the PlayStation 5, Xbox Series X and PCs only. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, on the other hand, All-Star Battle R is now releasing September 2nd on the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, Xbox consoles and PCs as well. Well, Bandai Namco, to accompany this great new fighting game, did actually release another trailer and said this re-release game will expand the roster to over 50 playable characters and some more new mods to play through. Check it out. これ We are the Blue Foxes. Perhaps you've heard of us. That new mercenary group based in Central Field. This will be the Blue Fox's first long-distance deployment. Expect a major battle. <laughs> 
Moving on, we have once again by Square Enix from earlier this year, something called the Diefield Chronicle. But what is described to be a deeply strategic role-playing game and technically designed by the strategy veterans at Square Enix and from different eras through the company's history. As you can see, taking inspiration from games like Fire Emblem, Three Houses, and even Final Fantasy. Well, check it out. This game is releasing September 22nd this year and on PCs and consoles as well. Sorcery since before records began. It is bountiful here on Dio Field, but not on the mainland where it fetches a pretty penny. A resource war looms on the horizon. The terms they proposed were simply unacceptable. True shame. This is a predicament of your own making. I am well prepared. All I wish for is to keep fighting alongside you. Our time will come. We must be patient. To right this kingdom's wicked path, I ask you all to lend me your strength. Moving on, we've got Brawls on its way to the consoles, PCs, Switch 2, September 2nd this year. The game's available through a free demo on Steam too, in case you couldn't really wait that long. The game's a brawler, as the title suggests, although starring just minifigures. And yes, the game did actually come out initially years ago for the Apple arcades only. It'll now have a campaign playable in co-op multiplayer and offline as well, of course, and across PCs and consoles into both generations. Check it out just in case you missed it. mysteries, and beloved Disney and Pixar friends. The valley was once a happy and magical place, until one day the forgetting set in. Moving on, we have a new gameplay trailer finally for Disney Dreamlight Valley from only hours ago. Just in case you're new to what is going on here, the question is, if you're a fan of old sim games like Animal Crossing, uh, stuff like fishing, farming, exploration, and well, dungeon crawling a little bit, this is probably the one for you. It's a free-to-play game as far as I'm concerned. It has been in the making since 2020. The game is finally releasing September 6th and on PCs and consoles as well. Check it out. Our friends in the valley. Speaking of friends, your Disney and Pixar neighbors are scattered all around Dreamlight Valley and cannot wait to go on amazing adventures with you. You'll certainly get to meet them as you walk around diverse and breathtaking environments like Dazzle Beach, the Glade of Trust, the Peaceful Meadow, or the Plaza. Each new character you meet has a unique story to tell. Some of them might be in need of help with quests that will send you exploring the world around you. You may even find yourself developing a friendship with those that you least expect. When you start interacting with your newfound friends, you'll be sent on various quests that will require you to explore the mystery. And I guess America, on the other hand, just came out and released a new trailer for The Legend of Heroes, Trails from Zero, that the games now do for the PlayStation 4 and PCs only, and do out September 27 this year. Well, here's a trailer, and just in case you're wondering, and I've actually said it before, Trails from Zero originally came out in Japan as a PSP game about dozens of years ago, and this is, as you can see, its first English version.
Moving on, we've got Construction Simulator Extended Edition. Well, technically the next installment in a series of games which has been around for a while and making really just addictive content. Only problem is that it is now even bigger and better than ever, as, as developers say, where you get to take charge of over 70 machines and across two huge maps. There's a new co-op multiplayer mode to go through, more features of course, and all of that releasing across all platforms September 20th this year. I'm pretty sure there's a few of you here who've been patiently waiting to hear this one and if not, if you're a classic first person shooting fan from almost half a century back, well I would say there's a good chance you know about Metal Hellsinger already. It's a rhythm based shooter and has been in the works since almost 3 years ago. Check it out, the game is releasing September 15 this year finally and for PCs, Playstation 5 and Xbox Series X only. won't do. You two aren't cut out for it. But don't let your guard down. Okay, I'm going. Good point. This again. Wow. Moving on, we've got uh, Maiden Abyss, Binary Star Falling Into Darkness. A new game in this series of manga-based stuff that date back to more than six years ago, and now technically an action RPG in case you're new to by Spike Chunsoft. Well, the new game is releasing for PCs and the PlayStation 4 only September 2nd. This year, the fine folks then behind the game also released a new trailer, and this time around, mostly gameplay. Take a look. show the world has ever seen. At number 16 by Zen Studios and Saber Home Interactive. And from only days ago, well, we have here something called Circus Electric, which is technically a turn-based tactical RPG where you will have the chance to lead this carnival of heroes and the steampunk Victorian version of London, which it, it did actually exist. And it's just a circus management sim game. Guys, the game is coming over to PCs, Xbox and PlayStation consoles into both generation and do well with September 6th this year. Whether heroes in the streets or heroes in the ring, there's just no beating for Circus Electric. Coming up 
behind that, and it's been actually quite a while since we've had any updates on this one, but we have a pixel art, as you can see, Souls-like hack and slasher that's been in the making since 2021, early. Well, something called There Is No Light. So described, actually by developers as a dark mode action adventure game set in some sort of an underworld and also inspired by games like Hyperlight Drifter and more. Well, check it out. Games due out September this year. All we know is that it's probably going to be around 15th to 20th. The Magister has summoned you all for an audience. We need capable fighters to counter the attacks and discover their origin. Magister, we accept your offer. And last but not least, for those of you specifically who've missed it, we have Freedom Planet 2 by Galaxy Tail, an action side-scrolling platformer and also the sequel to Freedom Planet from all the way back 2014. The game is now scheduled for release on the PlayStation and Xbox consoles into both generation PCs as well and due out September 13th this year. Finally, as supposed to the previously announced 2023 release. Check it out. The game is just basically for those of you wondering some sort of a Sonic the Hedgehog inspired platformer that I was, well, like I mentioned, released first eight years ago. Please, in the name of justice, help us protect our city. Very well. I will make time to listen to your intriguing offer. But first, this calls for a race. Really? You do know who I am, right? Aw, yeah! This is why I put on my punching gloves! My stones! We have a new record! We need you to track down a thief. A large portion of our weapons and steel reserves have mysteriously vanished. Nervous as always, I see. Very well. Whatever. I'll just give him a one-way ticket home, courtesy of the Hundred Hook Punch. The world of Avalus needs hope, but more than that, it needs heroes.